And now joining us to discuss this further is Melchior Szczepanik from Polish Institute of International Affairs. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So if you could help us unpack the situation, what were the key outcomes of the first day of the EU summit in Brussels? Well, first and foremost, the, the, the leaders of EU member states uh, elected new candidates for, for the, the so-called top jobs, so the key, the key positions in the European Union. President of the European Council, uh, President of the European Commission, and then the unofficial EU foreign, foreign minister, so the head of EU diplomacy, which, uh, who is called High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. And this is this is a, a sort of a package package deal on, on on top positions, and the politicians who will who will take these positions uh, represent a certain balance uh, within within the European Union. So they represent uh, countries from south, north, uh, and the center of the European Union, as well as the larger uh, as a balance between larger and smaller member states. So this this is always. Um, one of the criteria used by the by the leaders. So not, not only the competence, of course, first and foremost, the competences of the candidates, but also the, the, the trio of the most important positions must represent a certain balance uh, between EU member states. And this, this is the case. And uh, perhaps I should also add that the candidates also represent the major political families in, in the European Union. So the, the centrist, centrist, uh, pro-integration, pro pro-EU pro political families, namely the, the center-right Christian Democrats, the Social Democrats, and the, the centrist liberal uh, alliance. So um, the, the, the president of the European Council is, is now elected as regards the two other, two other positions. So the president of the European Commission and the high representative for foreign affairs they will have to be they will have to be confirmed by the european parliament in, in mid july but it seems likely that the european parliament will confirm these these candidates namely ursula von der leyen for her second term as as president of the commission and then kaya kalas the current prime minister of estonia as as eu top diplomat so now with all these choices, you also said, I mean, you said that there is a balance that they represent. And I also wanted to ask about the choice of choosing Kaya Kallis for the EU's uh, high representative of foreign affairs. Do you think, can we say that, well, having her as uh, having her in this position means no more excuses and that uh, this region of Europe has to be listened to as of course Estonia also knows what it is to be well under uh, Russian influence and rule absolutely I think it's uh, I think it's very important uh, well considering the international situation in which we we find ourselves at the moment namely the Russian aggression of Ukraine and, and, and the war that is going on, I think it is uh, the, the EU sends a very important signal uh, choosing uh, a, um, a politician from the Baltic states as, as its top diplomat. Uh, it is important to uh, emphasize that the Baltic states have been warning uh, against or have been sh showing, demonstrating Russia's uh, aggressive uh, ideas, aggressive tendencies for a, for, for a very long time. And, and for, for some time, these, these warnings were ignored. So it is now important to, um, to show that the EU appreciates the threat that is coming from Russia and, that, and th that the EU is ready to confront that threat and to deter Russia from, from more aggressive, uh, aggressive behavior. So, I think I think choosing Kaya Kallas as, as uh, EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs is a very important signal that the EU, that the Union is determined to to uh, support Ukraine and also and by supporting Ukraine also um, defending its values and defending the international order.
So seeing now these three leaders, we do see that the negotiation process itself was quite fruitful. And I want to come back to what you said um, earlier about the fact that now uh, these three represent major political families. Um, and it seems that uh, one family or part of it was left out, and I'm talking now about uh, Georgia Meloni, um, as she feels upset with now, the outcome that she was not engaged in negotiations, she was not led to be engaged in negotiations itself. So how do you think this might impact now the political landscape um, in the European Parliament? When making the most important decisions, the EU member states um, strive to, to have a consensus and to, to show that the, the EU is united and that it is cohesive and, and it, that the EU leaders are capable of, of finding compromises and acting together. But it is not always uh, possible to please everyone and to, to, to find a solution that is supported by, by everyone. And um, that was the, the case uh, recently, as you as you said, Giorgia Meloni is not is not satisfied with this with this uh, trio with this uh, pro proposal for for top jobs. I think uh, it is more the question of uh, form of the process rather than substance. I think the Meloni was uh, after her good showing in the European election in, in Italy. She was quite convinced that she would be more, that her role in the selection of the top EU positions would be would be greater. Um, but, you know, in, in order to have influence, you have to have allies. And uh, she, she doesn't, uh, you know, she, she, she wasn't able to convince the major political families that she is a necessary ally in, in this in this situation. Perhaps it was a bit of a mistake on, on, on um, from, from the leaders of the major political families, not to include her a bit more in the negotiations, because I believe that for her, what is very important is her image on, on the national scene. And uh, she wanted to, uh, to show that, she's, uh, that even though she's not officially member of the, of the centrist coalition, that she's an important influential politician and she's appreciated by her by her peers on, uh, uh, at the EU level and this didn't happen so it's at the moment now it's difficult for her to to defend this image uh, of, of an influential politician on the national scene but I think um, I think uh, it is still possible that uh, her um, her party in the European Parliament will will support Ursula von der Leyen uh, as as uh, president of the European Commission, you, because Italy will have a commissioner, we will have a member of the European Commission. So um, the negotiations are ongoing still for uh, for other positions, a bit less important, but still quite quite significant. And um, I think Meloni will, will will try to find some sort of a compromise with von der Leyen. Uh, who will probably um, have an important post for an Italian politician, and 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 so perhaps this this uh, uh, difficult situation that exists now between between Meloni and the and the centrist co the major figures of the centrist pro EU co coalition will be will be moderated somehow in the days to come. I believe. All right. Well, Melchior Szczepanik, Polish Institute of International Affairs, thank you very much for speaking to us here on TVP World this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much.